So I try to anticipate these people and it's usually pretty easy because the programs are fairly simple and transparent even though they believe they're secret and <clears throat> I usually keep quiet about um, what I know as a sort of strategy um, but sometimes I think um, in the exposition of their um, conspiracies um, is the only place that we are going to find our better worlds. And so I guess it's a matter of time and timing and the the misguided I guess we'll reap the harvest of that once who sabotage themselves and others will pay the price sad I'm not a savior I'm not here to save you even if I could and I'm going to go ahead and take a stab now I'm going to post this one on the Kosabi Institute at this other mission and I've met a few people recently and I'll go ahead and forward this to you who I think have a shot at understanding the mission um, the sort of deeper mission of the of the Institute and it relates to what I consider to be the most significant change in humanity in its evolution thus far and if you look at humanity there was the time when mankind learned how to make fire um, he conquered the elements basically he went through them earth you know he made the club you know he learned how to manipulate earth he learned how to manipulate water with the hydroelectric power plant and the grist mills and you know the the, the sorts of things in the air um, and then Tesla came along and Tesla brought us the understanding of the way to manipulate prana that's the best best word for it um, and, and the Hindus have all these words for energy and consciousness and stuff like that that were sorted out um, in Sanskrit back uh, before the Dark Ages back when this higher light from the cosmos was present on Earth. And I think it's highly ironic that uh, quote unquote Christ returned for a while and the Christians uh, were so busy looking for Jesus that they missed him. And uh, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to go there, but the, 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 the significant thing that has happened in the past 50 years is uh, what we're uh, <laughs> we're commonly brainwashed into believing is space travel and um, that is a misnomer um, and it's it's a very very dangerous thing that humanity is getting itself involved with right now in that endeavor in those discoveries and those challenges that we face up there and the civilization of Atlantis notwithstanding um, there's a negotiation that has to take place um, with our uh, intellectualization of the nature of time space before we will actually understand uh, what, what is going on up there and so 
the the, the, the broader challenge that we're going to be facing um, is the understanding of the underlying mechanics of physical reality. There is a relationship between, as I said before, the photon and its hypertime translation. And its hypertime translation involves the space at a distance. And so there is this relationship that has been identified in quantum mechanics called the photon spin entanglement. And this was the big break from Newtonian mechanics. It's the underlying inspiration for all of the science that has gone on since the Michelson and Morley experiment. Uh, the Michelson interferometer um, really changed the way we look at light and it's people started studying it. Einstein said it travels at a constant rate. That was a big revelation um, because it violates Newtonian mechanics in a big way. And so the camps of quantum mechanics spun out of that. Now, astrotometry resolves the photon spin entanglement probably, I haven't read Walter Russell's work, but from the, the nuggets of wisdom that he seems to be quoted on, it seems like he understood this. That the photon spin entanglement is, in astrotometry, understood to be the consequence of the hypersymmetry as the photon itself is translated through time. And so there's a translation that happens that requires both the source and the destination in order for the translation to take place because there's an underlying carrier wave that bounces back and forth between the place where the photon is headed and the place where it arrives in the next moment and that is the hypertime geometry of the photon's movement now I could put a math on this I could say I could I could say the math I'm not going to because I'm not sure about it yet I don't want to I don't want to um, I don't want to make that leap yet but the the implications of this the implications of this are extraordinary on the nature of the relationship between the membrane that we think of as the ionosphere and the rest of space. Because the ionosphere has these photons in it. The ionosphere is a place where these things come together. It's a, uh, what in fractal geometry you would call an escape. It's an escape. And so there's a place where the natural mathematical relationships between the past, present, and future, between those three concepts in time, form the physical material on the Earth. And so this is the underlying mechanism that we perceive as the Newtonian third law of cause and effect. Now, This is the science for it. It's challenging. And this is why I've approached it from a scientific standpoint. Because the people who are mucking around up there consider themselves scientists. And so, no disrespect intended for those of you who are interested in truth.